Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Indian PM Modi tells states to focus on green growth, net zero target by 2070. Activists protest in Geneva to highlight atrocities in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And Sri Lanka's T estate Tamils fear generational poverty discrimination after months of crisis. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday encouraged the state governments and citizens to focus on green growth and green jobs to achieve the target of net zero carbon emission by 2070. Addressing the National Conference of Environment Ministers, he urged the officials to promote a circular economy to strengthen the solid waste management campaign. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said that the focus of the country is on green growth and green jobs, as he underlined the significance of achieving the net zero target for the year 2070, while virtually addressing a conference of state environment ministers in Western Gujarat state. The Prime Minister urged all environment ministers to promote a circular economy and said it will significantly strengthen the solid waste management campaign and to get free from the clutches of single-use plastic. He asked the states to own the measures like vehicle scrapping policy and biofuel measures like ethanol blending and strengthen them on the ground. And now we have about 5-10 years ago. Net Zero has a target of Net Zero. Now the focus of the country is on growth. And when we talk about green growth, we also have a lot of work for green jobs. Giving examples of the International Solar Alliance Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, PM Modi remarked that India is not just taking huge strides in the field of renewable energy, but also guiding other nations of the world. The two-day conference will focus on topics including combating climate change, forestry management, prevention and control of pollution. India has set a global example in the fight against plastic pollution with the ban on select single-use plastic items from July this year. Heavy rainfall disrupted traffic and inundated major highways in several cities across northern India, including in capital New Delhi on Friday. In Gurugram, a satellite city of New Delhi, authorities ordered schools to be shut and urged residents to work from home due to continual flooding caused by incessant rainfall. An incessant spell of rain drenched India's capital, New Delhi, for the third consecutive day on Friday, leading to water logging in several areas and affecting traffic movement on key roads across the city. Authorities in neighboring Gurugram city ordered schools to be closed and urged residents to work from home due to continual flooding caused by the heavy rainfall. Pedestrians had to wade through knee-deep rainwater while the vehicles moved at a snail pace. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued a yellow alert cautioning people about more rain in the national capital region over the weekend. Meanwhile, Yogi Adityanath, the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh State on Friday conducted an aerial survey of the flood-affected districts and directed concerned officials to expedite relief operations. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan has apologized in the court in a contempt case and has assured that he won't hurt the dignity of the judiciary. The charges were related to a speech by Khan in which he allegedly threatened police and a female judge last month after one of his close aides was denied bail in a sedition case. 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Thursday apologized in a contempt of court case and promised not to hurt the dignity of the judiciary, a concession that could avoid his disqualification from politics. Khan was charged with a contempt of court following a speech he made at a public rally in capital Islamabad last month where he threatened actions against Judge Zeba Chaudhary and senior Islamabad police officials for arresting his top aide Shahbaz Gill in a sedition case. He stated that he has realized that during the proceedings he may have crossed a red line and assured that he would never do anything in future that would hurt the dignity of the court or the judiciary. <laughs> माफियाज के खिलाफ मैं जिससे जंग नहीं लड़ने वो पाकिस्तान की अदलिया अ कन्विक्शन फॉर कंटेम्प्ट वुड हैव डिसक्वालिफाइड खान फ्रॉम स्टैंडिंग फॉर इलेक्शन द क्रिकेट स्टार टर्न पॉलिटिशियन हैज फेस्ड अ बैराज ऑफ लीगल वोज सिंस हिज आउस्टर इन अ कॉन्फिडेंस वोट इन अप्रैल बाय यूनाइटेड ऑपोजिशन लेड बाय हिज सक्सेसर प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ मूविंग ऑन Activists from Pakistan administered Kashmir staged an anti-Pakistan protest this week outside the UN office in Geneva and highlighted grave human rights situation in the illegally occupied region. They also urged the international community to intervene and take note of Pakistan's sponsorship of terrorism. Members of the United Kashmir People's National Party UKPNP recently held an anti-Pakistan protest on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva and highlighted the grave human rights situation in Pakistan administered Kashmir. The protesters raised concern over the issue of enforced disappearances and underscored a consistently deteriorating socio-economic situation in the region. They demanded Pakistan to stop exploiting the natural resources and also added that they were being denied basic rights and their dissent was being met with brute high-handedness. The activists urged the international community to intervene and take note of Pakistan's sponsorship of terrorism. वहाँ के लोगों को आज की एक इसी सदी में आजादी से जीने दिया जाए और वहाँ लोगों को self of determination के जो चक्कर में डाला हुआ है उससे बेहतर है कि लोगों को freedom of expression दें वहाँ को लोगों को आजादी दें बोलने की वहाँ के लोगों को आजादी दें movement की वहाँ के लोगों को आजादी दें कि वो अपने expression को पेश कर सके People in the illegally occupied region accuse Pakistan of meeting out atrocities on them. Over the past several years, many of them have been forced to flee their homes owing to a crackdown launched by Pakistani agencies. Activists say those who are not that fortunate are implicated under trumped-up charges and thrown in jails. The US Europe group on Afghanistan on Thursday released joint communique in which they said the presence of Al Qaeda leader Ayman Al Zawahiri who was recently killed in a US strike in Kabul showed the Taliban was not keeping its counter terrorism commitments. The Taliban has said it is investigating the July air strike and that it has not found the Al Qaeda leader's body a co-accused in 9/11 attacks. Several western countries have expressed grave concern about the presence and operations of extremist groups in Afghanistan and said the Taliban were not meeting their counterterrorism commitments. Special envoys and representatives for Afghanistan of the European Union, France, Germany, Italy, Norway, the United Kingdom and the United States met last week and released a joint communique on Thursday. in which they said the presence of al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri who was recently killed in a US strike in Kabul showed the Taliban was not keeping its commitment the Taliban has said it is investigating the July air strike and that it has not found the al-Qaeda leader's body a co-accused in the 9/11 attacks The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, the name the Taliban give their government, says it has improved security in the country since taking power around a year ago. But there have also been several blasts in recent months, some of them targeting busy mosques during prayers. The United Nations have raised concerns about the growing number of attacks and some blasts have also been claimed by a local branch of the Islamic State militant group. 
Tea estate workers in Sri Lanka of Indian Tamil descent are facing a hard time due to generational poverty, while the country grapples with its worst economic crisis in decades. They continue to have their race recorded as Indian Tamil, a move that some of them say compounds their economic hardship as it is harder to get jobs. With cold air nipping at her fingers on the Norwood Tea Estate in Sri Lanka's central province, 38-year-old Amasi Geetha and almost 100 tea pickers like her work razor focused on the task at hand, picking enough tea leaves to secure their daily wages amid the country's worst economic crisis. The vast majority of these workers are descended from Tamil indentured labourers who were shipped by the British from India during colonial times and continue to have their race recorded as Indian Tamil, a move that some of them say compounds their economic hardship as it is harder to get jobs. Rampant inflation has caused food prices to rise by 93.7%. However, the basic pay rate for tea workers has remained the same at about 2.79 US dollars for 40 pounds of tea leaves. Poverty is not new to Sri Lanka's tea estate workers, but the economic crisis and its impacts on food and education make them fear there will be no way out of their situation, with future generations forced to continue living in the never-ending cycle of hardship. <laughs> Sri Lanka's financial crisis is the result of the economic mismanagement in the coronavirus pandemic, which destroyed its tourism sector a key revenue earner. For months, the population of 22 million has struggled with power cuts, rampant inflation, a plummeting rupee and shortage of foreign exchange reserves that made it difficult to pay for imports of food, fuel and medicine. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama slammed China on Thursday stating that he would prefer to die in a free democracy of India rather than amid artificial Chinese officials. The spiritual leader made the remarks while addressing a two-day dialogue with youth leaders at his residence in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, said on Thursday that he would prefer to die in India as he held a dialogue with the youth leaders of the United States Institute of Peace, USIP, in India's northern Dharamsala. Dalai Lama annually interacts with 28 USIP youth leaders who hail from conflicted homelands and encourages them to establish peace and stability there. Earlier in March 2019, he said it was possible that once he dies, his incarnation could be found in India, where he has lived in exile for 60 years, and warned that any other successor named by China would not be respected. I told the former Indian Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh. Man Mohan Singh. I told him. When, of course, I will live another 15, 20 years, there's no question. <laughs> uh, but at the time when I dying, I prefer in India. You see, surrounded with people who really show you love. Mm. Oh, not artificial something. <laughs> uh, if I dying surrounded with these Chinese officials, <laughs> too much artificial. <laughs> 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 so I much prefer dying this country free.
democracy open the dalai lama has long been at loggerheads over tibet with china which brands him reactionary and separatist the spiritual leader who won the nobel prize in 1989 says he seeks greater rights including religious freedom and true autonomy for tibetans well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India